Memphis, black energy and white energy started to come together in a way that would eventually cause rock and roll to explode across the whole country. The catalyst for this transracial fusion was a 27-year-old radio engineer who decided to record some of the songs he was hearing. All of our equipment was relatively inexpensive, but believe me, we had to know what to do with it or we would have had nothing. And, and, and all of the young people, this is the thing I'm proudest of, I guess, that we had here in this studio, black and white. Believe me, take my word for it, unequivocally, the thing I'm proudest of, all of us were just, we were just beginners. You know, just beginners. My baby woke up this evening. The Chess has recorded what came to be known as Chicago Blues. Mississippi Delta bluesmen like Howlin' Wolf and the great Muddy Waters, who now used electric guitars and amplified harmonicas to be heard over the din in big city nightclubs. The electrification was to prove crucial for rock and roll. We noticed that the electric sound, the echo, all those kind of gimmicks was really new. were catching on, something, something new. new. So chess, then we started looking for new and different things. You know, that's what, you know, we, we saw that the original and the fresh stuff, the fresh sound was what sold records. Nope. We've uh, set up a 20-man committee to do away with the this vulgar, animalistic, nigger, rock and roll box. The obscenity and vulgarity of the rock and roll music is obviously a means by which the white man and his children can be driven to the level with the nigger. It is obviously nigger music. They accused us of causing white people to love niggers. They accused us of mutilating music by trying to integrate and try to copy and, and just totally destroy all that was good in music. And so, believe me, the resistance on this was absolutely incredible. The backlash didn't, didn't come from, 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 from the, the population in America. It came mostly from the South and a few people who didn't want to see this music. Because again, now here's what you're doing. Remember, when I say white people, white girls like that music. They was coming around seeing them little black boys and shaking and stuff like that. That was a no-no in this country. They would say, that, that boy gonna come to town singing that black music and gonna run our children crazy. You understand me? Because this black music was so intense. It was so full of power and rhythm. It was so full of that uh, fervency. It had it going on. White America and some black America wasn't ready for it. You know, they, they, they didn't understand it. Hey, what is this, you know? And then they took Pat Boone and threw Pat Boone on me. Oh, out, Bob, loom out, blah, 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 Nope. Well, now, before I heard Elvis do Blue Moon of Kentucky, I'd always heard it by Bill Monroe. And, of course, he did it. He wrote it, and he did it completely different. He did it as a waltz, more like a ballad, like... Blue moon of Kentucky, keep on shining. Shine on the one that's gone and said goodbye. Blue moon of Kentucky, keep on shining. Shine on the one that's gone and said goodbye. Then here comes Elvis, sir, you know. Blue moon, blue moon, blue moon, keep shining bright. Blue moon, keep on shining bright. You're gonna bring me back my baby tonight. Blue moon, keep shining bright. I say blue moon, I can talk to you to keep on shining. Shine on the one that's gone and 